Welcome back to So Sweet. Um, today we're doing a garden tour. So last week I showed you guys these. These have grown so much. This is my glass gem corn. All the corn in my yard is glass gem. Um, this year, woo! It's a big, <laughs> big bee. Um, but these have surpassed me in height by a couple of feet now. So in here, you can see that the tassels are starting to almost be visible. And down here, you can see the corn starting. Now, eventually, the silks will pop out of those and the tassels will pollinate them. So we're getting close. So I have talked about this. Uh, my corn has been kind of growing at different paces. I planted it all at the same time, but it's kind of exciting because I'll have a corn harvest and then I'll have another corn harvest because these are smaller. In here and then back in there. Um, so as long as they keep growing, we'll get corn and we'll get corn again. So that's going to be fun. So I have two different spots on my tomato trellises, walls, whatever, cattle panels of Roma tomatoes. And these have taken off. They're going clear to the, our fence. And they're taking up the walkway on the other side. And my other Romas are taking up our walkway now, which is really exciting. I like when it gets a little bit crazy. See right here? They're going crazy. Now I have my other tomato plants. I have a lot of blueberries over here. And they're finally starting to grow. Little tomatoes. And then, to be honest, I don't remember what all I planted over here, but luckily I wrote it down, it's in my book. <laughs> so I'll have to look at that and refer to it once these things start growing. <laughs> now this has grown a lot too. We're up above the trellis, the cattle panels with tomatoes. And I have been coming in and pruning um, with tomatoes. If it's a determinate, like my Romas, you don't prune them. If it's an indeterminate, you can prune them. So that's the method I chose to use. I prune them and I let them grow. But you can see right here, this is a sucker and it's growing essentially in the armpit of this plant. You just pull it off. But don't do white laundry after you play in the tomatoes because you'll turn your laundry colors because it leaves stains on your hands. My mom calls it tomato tar. I call it goo. I don't know. <laughs> so when I planted my tomatoes, some of them got in the ground early and some of them had to wait because I had to prep the ground for two more cattle panels. So. I planted them at different times. A lot of these were ready to get planted at the same time, but I just couldn't do it until I prepped the ground. Um, so these ones are smaller than these ones, but that's gonna help with harvesting because they won't. I won't have like 500 tomatoes all at once, except I kind of want it that way too. I just want all the tomatoes. I do have basil down here. And they are growing really well. Um, hopefully they grow even faster because that'd be nice. Because I need all the basil I can get with my tomatoes. I love it. So over here we had onions and I need to plant some more things which is going to be one of my next videos is your fall planting. But it's a little bare here and it's weedy because it's hard to keep up with all the weeds. But I have a variegated nasturtium here. And variegated just means it's not one color, it's multiple colors. You kind of have like the light with the dark. So 
Um, I do have potatoes here and they look really rough. I need to pull them out. I wasn't trying to grow toma tomatoes, <laughs> potatoes here this year, but they reseeded from last year after my garden died, I just didn't pull them. So my ground cherries have been growing and we've actually been able to eat ground cherries. Um, it's just a little bit. These ones were, I kind of think they were stunted. They're growing out like this more, whereas I have ground cherries over there, over there. I have ground cherries over there and they're growing more up and bushy. So it's kind of weird because these are just kind of crawling on the ground. But if you look here, you can see all of these lanterns, kind of like a tomatillo, and they're growing ground cherries. Um, this one's almost ready. You'll know when it's ready because it turns yellow and it falls off onto the ground. Let's see, oh, we have one. Ooh. Bugs trying to eat it. So all you do is open it up, should be yellow. These ones are smaller than I've seen other people's, but it has kind of like a pineapple-y type of a taste. And I love them. We'll always have these, always. I have more nasturtium here. This one's not variegated. You can see it's just the green color. It doesn't have like the, yellow and the white and all of that. Right here, we have a cantaloupe growing and it's gonna grow up this trellis. These, I had these last year. If you leave them long enough, they produce seeds and then they just fall. Let's see, this one, the seeds are kinda hiding but they're all right there, you see that? Now, if I do this and water it, that's what happened here, and I have a whole field of them right here, so that's fun. <laughs> right here, I thought this was a weed, but I wasn't quite sure what it was when it was smaller, and I thought, you know, I should leave it and see what it is. It's a zinnia, so, Looks like more of these will open right there, which I have bugs on them. Go away. <laughs> um, we should see more of these open and it's gonna be really fun. I wish more of them grew, but this is the only one that, that grew out of everything. Now right here, I noticed something's growing and I think I had some squash over here last year so I think it's a type of a squash plant so I'm just gonna leave it let it let it do its thing and hopefully I get squash of some sort I don't know what kind but some sort so my son had planted one pole bean down here and it started to climb finally. Um, we did have sugar snap peas there, and I am gonna plant some more here because we love them. Um, but this pole bean, which is another term for a climbing green bean, it started climbing and it jumped from here on its own, and there it goes. So this should probably go pretty far on this trellis, and it will even branch out a little bit more and I'll show you how I know that because I've got more growing. So I had planted cucamelons or Mexican sour, Mexican, man I can't talk today, Mexican sour gherkins um, over here and on that side and they didn't take. So I replanted them a few weeks ago and we have some starting to come in. So there's actually one there, one here, one here, and I honestly think this is another one. If this is not, then it's some other cucumber. I had issues with my cucumbers and I planted them again because I knew I had enough time to grow them. 
Um, hopefully they do okay as it gets a little bit cooler. The cucumber should, I don't know about the cucumelons. We'll see, but my last garden tour, these were nowhere near as tall. They're all the way up here now and they're just gonna continue growing and I'll have cucumbers just here for me hanging out. So I have three of those, nope, four of those plants right here. And we've been waiting all year for cucumbers. That's my daughter's absolute favorite vegetable of all time. She can just sit and eat whole ones. So we need those cucumbers. Now, if you've been following along, you know that I have more than one spot for glass gem corn. Um, this spot, it's, it's growing. It's getting bigger. This was my corn that I didn't think was going to make it. It just wasn't doing too good. Now, I did a no dig method on the corn, which is another video I'm going to talk about in the future because I didn't think it was going to work. <laughs> I just hoped it would work. So maybe I hoped it enough that it did, but I don't know. Okay, so in front here I have beets. And I'm going to be pulling those, those out. They're getting big. Right here, I thought this was a cayenne pepper. And now I'm not totally sure. I don't know if they usually get that thick. I thought that the cayenne peppers that I bought were long and skinny. It might be a different pepper. <laughs> we'll see. If it is, that's fine with me. I, I like it all. So I did plant some more of what I think is cayenne pepper. Um, these are small. Took me forever to get them planted. I had to pull my carrots out. Um, they were done and ready, but I just needed more space to get those peppers in the ground. Now this is another mammoth sunflower, and the hornets really love to hang out on these, so I'm not gonna tongue on it too much. But it looks like the head's already growing. Which is funny because it's not that tall, but it's probably because the space is limited right here for it to root down. That's what I'm thinking. We'll see. Down here, I have more ground cherries. I wanted all of the ground cherries this year. I've heard everybody talk about them. I had never tried them. Can't find them in a store near me. Um, so I grew them. So pretty soon, because I have even more over there, we're gonna have a lot of ground cherries. Back there, I have Paris Island lettuce. It's going to seed and I'm gonna harvest those seeds here real quick, because the back there looks pretty ready. I think I'm gonna have to wake up early, early, get out here before my hornet friends and bee friends are all out here, because I do not want to get stung. <laughs> um, I did bring some plants in and I planted these are buzz buttons or some people call them I think it's more referred to as a toothache plant and it's nicknamed a buzz button what should happen is I should be able to pull that little button yellow button off the top and it should make my mouth go numb so that's why they call it the toothache plant. If you have a toothache, you need that. <laughs> I do have basil, which this is so funny. I think it, I'm wondering if it cross pollinated with the purple opal, cause it's not all purple, but it's splotty. So um, basil here, there, and all the way down. Like I already said, I need all the basil I can get. My husband is pumped for homemade spaghetti sauce and I can't blame him. Last year we had our first taste of homemade spaghetti sauce. And it's so much better than store-bought. So much better. This right here, 
<laughs> this is my volunteer plant um, or plants. It's more glass gem corn. And I only know that because I haven't planted any other corn in this yard. Um, so this had to have replanted from last year and somehow all of it just planted here in the center of this garden bed and I honestly didn't think it would do very well um, just because it's all together there's no space so it's pulling the same nutrients um, and pulling from the same spot as the other corn plants but it's doing great I mean we have tassels in here I can see the corn starting to pop out of I don't know what to call it other than an armpit <laughs> um, but I'm excited I am excited this is when your carrot goes to seeds seed <laughs> um, it looks like Queen Anne's lace which I believe Queen Anne's lace is um, or carrots are in the family of Queen Anne's lace which is kind of like floral stuff used for like arrangement but it's really pretty it opens up and does this and then as they pollinate it whew, it starts to lose that whiteness and then it will get darker and then when it's ready I'll come out and get the seeds from it now I know that my ground cherries did not look that big in the last garden tour they've grown so much we're still waiting to get ground cherries from them but the ground cherries there are definitely bigger than the other ground cherries I showed you and like I said those ground cherries are just sprawling on the ground while this is more bush like so I think this is how it's supposed to be but it is my first year growing it I do have sugar rush peach pepper plants in here and I don't know if that's it um, like taking and starting to make the uh, pepper or not because this is my first time growing these but I'm I'm excited for those and my kids are excited for those oh and I just found a ground cherry on the ground after video snack <laughs> So I have calendula here. I was just out last night pulling flowers off. Um, I need to come and finish deadheading some of this. Deadheading is just when you pull the dead head off the plant. And so just so that more of them will grow because once the plant realizes, oh no, all that energy went into creating seeds so that there can be more of these plants, once they realize that's gone, they shoot up more flowers. Over here, I have my grapes. And it looks as though it's time for harvesting. These are really sweet and really good tasting. They do have seeds in them and I think what I'm gonna try to do is um there's like a canner type thing where you steam out the juices um that's what i'm planning to do with that and then i can can it and have it throughout the year instead of just having grape juice right now now this isn't enough grapes for us to have a year's worth of grape juice eventually It'd be nice if I can get it to go a lot further and grow a lot more. You see what I mean? That other sunflower plant isn't nearly as tall as this one. I've referred to this as a monster and it really is. I want to pull a measuring tape out and see how big it is. Yesterday my neighbor was like, is that a sunflower plant? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Everybody probably thinks I'm weird because I literally ripped out my whole backyard and I'm growing everything I can. So it's not weird, it's food, right? 
in here, I tried to stake up these tomatillos with some sticks, but man, they are still falling over. I think if I have the space, um, that next year I'll try to grow these on a cattle panel so that I can just tie them up to the panel and they won't break and snap because I want all the tomatillos. So tomatillos look like this. We've already been able to get five tomatillos out of here because they showed they were ready. Now how a tomatillo is ready, how you know it's ready, is this spot right here. Is, it's going to end up breaking open because the berry, I don't know what else to call it other than like a berry type thing, tomato type thing, will get so big that this husk, this lantern, breaks. Um, so I've got quite a few growing in here and hopefully they just keep taking off because I like food. Down here we have my watermelon. Um, so far I kind of think it's the only one there. Um, the bees need to work harder. That, <laughs> Cause I don't know how you pollinate watermelon. With tomato plants, you just shake it. I don't know, I don't know. My grandma did used to, I think she'd take a paintbrush type thing and she'd paint inside the flower, and like move it around to make sure her tomatoes were pollinated. <laughs> Now, I've been waiting for this all year, ever since I started my garden, or even when I started planting seeds, which was February. <laughs> I was in my house watching, oh, it was Floret Flower on the Magnolia. I think it was part of the Magnolia Network, and maybe they released it early, because I don't think Magnolia Network was out fully yet. Um, but I was watching Floret flower and planting seeds at some point. I had two different times I planted seeds. These are pole beans and I've waited since near the start of the year to have a trellis that started to fill out because it's just so fun and pretty. So these are coming down all the way over here. Now they shoot off even more runners and sometimes I'll just twist them on because I want them to fill it out. <laughs> but we already have green beans in here already growing. So hopefully we can get a lot more because I would say green beans and corn is one of the most eaten or are some of the most eaten foods in my house year round and this is not enough green beans um i would have to i think i'd have to plant a whole ton more but we have quite a few growing hopefully they just keep taking off that does it for this garden tour it's the sun's getting close to setting so i better log off but we have some other things in the works and I'm still a newbie. I'm still learning. This is only my second year gardening and I didn't even get to finish my first year. So hang out with me, show me your garden, connect with me on social media. I'm on Instagram and YouTube. Um, if you want to subscribe and I'll be back again with another video soon. Until next time.